welcome to Hellman Titan Connectivity. I'm Tony. And I'm Stu. Today we're going to be showing you how to install the AFN enclosure. We'll be giving you a step-by-step -step guide to installing and fibering up the AFN with the various components included within this product. So let's see what's inside the box. We have 24 LC APC pigtails. We have the AFN box itself. One instruction manual. And inside the box, we have a selection of cable ties, a wall mounting kit, and a small length of spiral wrap. Now, let's look at the first step of installation. Right, Tony, so the first thing we need to do to install the box is actually open the lid up. So we unscrew the tamper-proof screw, and then we use the latches on the side by flicking these back, unclipping to open the lid. You'll notice as well that the lid gets to there and stops. What we've got on there is some bump offs. If we force this back, it flicks back into place. And the reason for this is, if it's windy day and you're up a pole, for example, we don't want this blowing back and slamming onto your fingers. Okay, good feature. Right, first thing we need to do is remove the outgoing seals by removing and pulling up these rubbers here. The next stage is to remove the spacer that holds the outgoing seals. Using your screwdriver, undo the screws. The spacer will then pull up. Please note the screws in there, you do not want to lose them. Then we can remove the incoming cable seal by doing the same, by just pulling up through that channel. Finally, we just want to remove the incoming cable clamp itself, like so. So Tony, the next step is we need to unhinge this tray here and move it up and out of the way. It stays in position, but just stays there. We then need to remove the bottom fibre splice tray so that we can get to the fibre storage underneath. And to do that, we just unwind these screws, about five turns. They don't need to come all the way out. And then because these have got a keyhole slot, you can just pull this back and remove that and put it to one side until we need it. Okay, excellent. So Stuart, what do we do next? Well Tony, what we're gonna be installing here is a ultra lightweight cable with four lots of 12 fiber elements inside. So what we wanna do is take two lots of these 12 core fibers up onto the tray mm -hmm. and the other two 12 cores we want to loop through and obviously daisy chain onto the next AFM box. So what we're going to do is put inside here a four meter window cut. So the first thing we want to do is um, put the seal on. And that just slides into the box. So, let's just position these where we want them. I'm going to pull them back slightly. And then we want to install the cable clamp on top. So we put the cable clamp on, it just locates into the holes, and then do the screws up. Just put the other side in first before I tighten them down. There we go, so now our cables are secured inside the box. Right, so now we've got the clamp in, we're gonna cut out the two cables that we don't need to go on to the next pole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the blue and the orange elements out of here now, out of the way. So we'll cut the blue one first, and the orange one. And I'm just gonna move these out of the way. Okay. You could hold those for me, that would be handy. Thank you very much. So what I want to do now is I actually want to store the blue, the green and the brown onto the back of the tray. So I just need to form a loop up. So these are uncut. So we just need to work out how big we want our loop. Which 
Yeah, that should be about fine. So then if we just do, this is always fiddly and you never get it right first time. I guess it helps having that uh, then radius allocated for the back of the box there. Yeah, it does. So now we wind these in. Right, so, excellent job. So what I'm doing there is we've got some retainer tabs in the bottom of the box that this all sits under, like that. And then, oh look at that, first time. Good job, well done. There we go. So now our cable that we don't want to cut, so this will run on now to the next pole. Okay, so okay. Change. But we can now take off our two 24 fibres in total from the blue and the orange elements there up onto the trays and these will now just sit underneath. Okay, perfect. Now we're now going to install the two 12 fiber elements up onto the tray. So what I like to do, and I'm going to spin this around so you can see it better on the video, is put another couple of loops in like this, just in case we get any problems with uh, breaking our splices for us amateurs. <laughs> now what we do then is leave, we're going to leave the blue and the orange elements just to the left hand side of those screws for the minute okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to install the tray over the loop because we know we no longer need to go in there so on the tray itself we've got two flat sections there which correspond with some little hooks inside the base there and then we've got the two um, keyhole slot entries that go over the screws so we locate those over the screw holes and then we push that up tops are retained in the hooks and then we just Tighten down the screws. Okay. And that's installed. That's a good design feature. And then all we need to do then is get the orange and the blue element up onto the tray itself. So what I'm doing here now is I'm not going to cable tie these directly onto the tray yet because we need to measure where we're going to strip back to the bare fibres. So where we like to do it, and I'm just going to tilt this over so we can see better, but where I like to do it is loop these in and we strip the fiber back between the two tabs here on this flat section. That just means we don't get any kinks on the cable yeah. once we've stripped back. So I'm going to mark this now with a, with a permanent marker. So I'm just going to mark somewhere there and that's where I'm going to strip my cables back to. And we'll come back in a second when I've done that. Right Tony, so I've now stripped back the cable Okay. From where I mounted earlier, and we now need to get these up onto the tray. Right. So let's just show you how that's done. So I'm going to bring that mark to where I said earlier and have it between the two tabs there. Okay. And what we need to do is just secure this fibre element to the tray. So with the AFM, we supply a number of small red cable ties, like you can see here. So I tend to loop it around the fibre element first. And then you can just take it over to the tray like that. Just pull on. Now we're not over tightening these, we're just doing it just enough just to secure it into position. It really is, it's just holding the fibre onto the tray to guide it as opposed to doing it up really tightly. Okay. Snip that off and then we'll do the blue one as well. So I'd still on that, it still moves, so I've not got it over tight right, on okay. that cable tight. Yep. You can see that on the camera. So then I'm just going to bring the blue one up now and do exactly the same. So I'll just put that there and then I'm going to put the cable tie in there. Bring that over. And it loops onto that T piece. It does in the middle. Okay. There we go. So I'll just put that on there. In there. And again, I'm not going to over tighten it, it's just enough. Just we still it. want the element to move underneath slightly, so I'm just nipping it. Okay, perfect. And then I'm just bringing those up to the marks up. So now we've got both of our bare elements, which I'm going to split between the brown, sorry, the orange and the blue. So let's get the blue one first. 
what we're going to do, we've got on here, we've got one and a half meters of bare end fiber. And we're just going to put that up here. And I want to store that on this upper central tray here. That's still keeping the bend radius safe. That's correct. Now we're probably going to have to remove this off of here in a little while when we splice. But for the time being, we're just going to store it in there. Why do we need to take that off the tray, Ed Stuart? Well, we'd need to take it off the tray, Tony, when we come to splice it. But we need to get the pigtails in place as well, ready. And also what we're doing here is putting these on so we can mark how long we need it or where we need ah, to cut okay. those splices. Now obviously, if you're a better splicer than I am, you can, <laughs> you can use a lot less cable because um, obviously you won't make as many mistakes as I probably will do. And then the last one there will come out across. This will come down. We'll take that so we're down to our bottom six splice holders there. And I'm just going to leave that in situ out of the way. Okay. Then we'll move on to the orange element and then we'll bring that up exactly the same way. There's plenty of room for that. Yeah, so. as you can see, I'm. I'll put them over them to one side. Yep. So then bring that up and we'll store these again. Makes it so much easier with those tabs there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It just holds them in place. Obviously, there's much better people at putting these in than me. I don't believe that for a second, sure. Got big fingers, Tony. <laughs> around there and then that's our second element and we'll use that in the top 12 splices just to separate the blue and the orange oh, element okay. so we know where they are yeah let's do it what's the next stage now well tony what we're going to do now is we're going to install all the pigtails first so then we can loop them around onto the bottom tray and then we can look at splicing them in so they come pre bagged which we've just stripped out but if you could give me a hand just to sure and strip and unravel these and I'll start putting them in. So what I would suggest is do not remove any of the dust caps until you're ready to actually plug these in. So I'm just gonna start at the top here, then remove the dust cap, remove the dust cap from that one, plug it in, and I'm just gonna work my way across. I'm gonna leave that hanging down. You got one there? There's one here. Oh, thanks. Should we swap sides? That's a good idea. That might be easier. <coughs> I'll let you trip over the cables. I'll do one as well because we'll be all day. Okay, so again, I'm going to remove the cap, then remove that cap, and then put it straight in. There you go. So what I'm doing is I've installed 12 on one side, like this. Okay, and then what we want to do is this 12, we have to just get all those together. So this 12 need to be brought around this side of the tray. Yeah. And the reason we do that is we don't, we can't obviously bring these to the right. Correct. Because we're going to put too much of a bend radius on these. Yeah. So we do 12 across to the side you can see I'm doing now, which is to the left. And I'm just going to bring them down there. And I'm going to leave them there for the moment. Okay. And then we're going to install the other side, the other 12. And they will go the other way to the right. But okay. We'll do them all together once they're yep. plugged in. Let's move you over towards me, Stuart. I'm not getting closer, Tony. There you go. 
Wouldn't have been able to do this in COVID days, would we? Well, it's a good job we got tested and you like my aftershave. Let's see. I helped you on that one. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> right. Sarcasm's extra. <laughs> I'm going to swap sides now. Okay, so obviously I showed you that 12 going this way. Yeah. Again, this 12 we're going to take the other direction. That's nice and neat. And I'm going to leave them just there for the minute. So we've got both sets 12 okay. coming out each side. Secured by the tab. That's correct. So what we need to do now is we've got to route these around to come out of this channel just here to go down onto the bottom tray. Now, but what we need to do is actually put it through some spiral wrap because what that does that that holds the cables in place as they transition from top tray to bottom tray okay and just protects the cables from when the doors open and of closing course. yeah so because they're going in this direction what we need to do is this side we need to do a direction change on there before we join it up with this side so what i'm going to do is we're just going to bring us down on the tray and then Oh, we'll call it up down there still. There we go. And then what we do is we'll bring it into the centre part of the tray. Okay. Yeah. So another feature this has got is you can actually direction change your fibres. I've just pulled that too tight. We'll just release that there. There we go. Right. Perfect. So that's enabling the change yeah. of direction. Do you want me to hold that down? Yeah, if you don't want it, it's quite handy. Obviously, you always get someone like yourself in the field. Okay, so now this 12 is joined up with this 12 here, and we can then bring them down ready for the transition correct so we'll get it to there so what we need to do so if you want to obviously get these numbered and know exactly where they're being spliced okay. to at this stage I would take these together so you know what they are yeah maybe you could have numbered them but what I'm going to do for the, for this demo purpose is I'm just going to join the whole lot together. Just put them back in there because I just pulled them all back out again. And what we're going to do is put the spiral wrap around. Now you can thread straight down the hole, and if you're lucky, they'll pop out the other side. If not, then we will have to use the spiral. Okay, as you can see, they're all different lengths because of the changes in, in bin radius. But honestly, I am just going to snip the ends off. Okay, see if this works. I have every faith in you, <laughs> as do the viewers. <laughs> this one. Okay, I'm just going to push that down. There we go, I've been lucky and it's gone through. Obviously, if you're not so lucky, your cable's slightly different and uh, well done. you would have to spiral it around, but it takes a little bit longer. So let's just push those down because 112 is obviously slightly longer than the other because it hasn't got a direction change. I just want to... You okay there? Yeah. So what I'm doing now then is I'm just bringing the spiral wrap up, just neatening the cables. And then the spiral wrap then, now I've got my, just tidy them up a little bit. And what we can do if you want to is we do have in the front lid there, 
there is the fibre picker which I haven't shown you which is useful just for getting into your grooves and just getting your cables a little bit neater. And that's actually included in the AFN is it? That is included Tony, it comes installed in the lid there with those two little pips it squeezes into those I'm not sure. Added bonus. <laughs> So then I'm just pushing the spiral binding into. Oh, it's secured in there automatically. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look, the little. I got some clips Those little top. overhangs yeah. there, they just. The, the spiral just squeezes past it. Perfect. And then if you look on the bottom tray, what uh, we've got the then is it's the same at the bottom. So I'm just going to push good. down there. What I'm just going to do in a second is we're going to check. So what that does, it protects all the fibres. So when this goes uh, uh, backwards and forwards, it's just there's protection in there. So. Excellent. Okay. That's pretty compact. So what I want to do is actually, I'm a little bit long on there. The spiral wrap's just a tad too long, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm going to chop a bit of that back. So I'm just going to unwind that. We can leave it on, onto the tray, but it just blocks off that channel there yeah. for when you're okay. looping around. So if I just go to there. Do you want to snip? <laughs> Not a chance, Tony. <laughs> oh, you have little faith, Stuart. And I'm just going to snip off the... That's nice and flush. There we go. That's really compact, isn't it? I like the look of it. There we go. So now our cables are ready to go around the loop. Okay. Right Tony, so now we've now brought this down, just to show you as well is, obviously so we know which 12 are which, mm -hmm. one thing, because we did the direction change on here, they are different lengths, so I can identify which side is which. Obviously we don't know which numbers they are, if you want to do that you would have marked those numbers on at the beginning, but uh, Pretty nice. for training purposes here we're <laughs> doing that. So what we're going to do now is just get the length for how long we want these to splice. And what I do with the 900 micron pigtails is we actually go around the outside of the box. Thank you. You're welcome. So rather than going into the central spline there where so on the outer. all the 250 is, we don't want to mix them up. Yeah because they just get tangled. It's actually easier to put these around the outside itself. Which is why these are kind of thicker. So it's guiding you that way, really, isn't it? Yes. So we're only going to go around with one loop on these because that is the length of our pigtail. Now these are ready to to come in. So there's our twelve from the right hand side. Mm -hmm. These obviously the longer ones because of the direction change on the right. Excellent. So we can pull them down. So what we've got now, now we've marked these on, we can now mark the length on here we need for our splicing. Yeah. On both, we'll cut these down and then we're ready for splicing. With the 250, you'll notice I'd, I literally just put a bit of tape on the end there. I just moved these into the middle out of the way once I'd got my size I needed. Right. Just to keep them out of the way while we put the 900s on. Yeah. But now, obviously, we're going to have to unwind these off to splice. We'll come back in a minute when these are done. Perfect. Good job. Thanks. Right, Tony. So now we've got all our splice and that sorted out. We're just the last thing to do is put the drop cable spacer back in, which I'm going to do now. Okay. That goes down. What I do is that clamps down the bottom incoming spacer as well. And there's just the two screws we took out earlier. Go inside. That's just a bit of extra compression down there. That's the it. Top. That's correct. And then just tighten these up until they nip up. There's one. And there's two. Perfect. And then finally, what we need to do is just replace all of the drop cable seals in there, ready for when you do the final install or drop to the house, which 
normally gets done, I would say, at a later date. Okay, put them in there, close your lid up, and then screw the box up. A job well done. And that is our network <coughs> install complete for the box. Right Tony, so it could be months down the line, but finally we want to install some drops to some customers. Yeah. So what we do there then is uh, obviously undo the screw, the tamper proof screw in there, the screwdriver. We're going to unclip it like we did earlier. So we're going to open that up, go beyond this bump off so it clicks back in place. Again, you don't want this blowing in your face in the wind. So then what we have here then is obviously we've got all our connectors across the top there. Um, which we're going to plug into. So the first method of install I'm going to show you is with a standard drop cable itself. So to do that, here is a typical typical drop cable you would get on an install. And to, to feed this in here, what we need to do is actually take and remove one of the, one of the drop cable seals. Yeah. Now, obviously, we can't poke the connector through a hole. Um, doesn't work. So with these, they've been designed. They're actually split. And they'll take a range of cable from, I mean, these go from sort of two mil up to five mil on these particular ones. And there's a, at the back, if you look at it, there's no, there's no holes. But if you look at the front, there's a hole there. Okay. Obviously the idea of that is we have a very thin membrane at the back. So if there's no cable installed, the so box is still sealed. It's like a blanking plug. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this into connection number one. So first thing to do is we're going to remove the dust cap off number one on there. Obviously there's no dust cap on here, but there should be. And I'm going to install and plug that into place. I've just noticed Stuart, it actually tells you on the board down here. Plug it does Tony, on. there is numbers. It makes it a lot so easier. So 1 to 12 on the bottom row, 13 to 24 on the top. Good to know. It is good to know that. So obviously we're doing 1, 2, 3, 4. We're now going to work our way across the bottom. Okay. So the next one I'm going to get, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to plug this in like so. So what I'm going to do just for demonstration purposes Tony is actually I'm going to go onto the top row now and do number 13 and 14 just to show you how these would come out in this position okay. because as you come across 1 to 12 you would follow out with the cables and come out the corresponding guide Yeah, I and I, I just want to show because we've only got the four here I just want to show how it comes out of the seal when we've got more than the two cables. Okay. So if I can have one of those thank you very much and plug that into 13 and I'm going to take that one and plug it into 14. Thank you very much. So what happens is, is obviously I'm going to, I'm going to split this apart and I'm going to put number one into the bottom slot there on this cable seal. So the very, the bottom one. And then I'm going to grab the top one there and I'm going to do the same and put that into the top into the top hole as we got there. And you can kind of just Loosen your grip slightly, these slide backwards and forwards, just so you can aim them back up here. So then I'm just going to take row two, which is number two and number 14, split the middle one apart. Just going to put that in the bottom there. Then the top one again, I'm going to put into the middle hole. So then what you do, Tony, is we would just squeeze that in there and then we push that down into place. That's it. We are now we've got a sealed cable connection. But what I also want to do is, what we don't want is this being pulled on, which could be an issue. So cable tie is provided with a box, thank you very much. These will cable tie onto these little, what we call upside down mushrooms on the bottom there. Okay. So I'm just gonna... Going okay, about the seals, that's giving us IP55 rating. There is an IP55 on this box, that's correct. Excellent. It's also IK08 as well, Tony. Oh, good to know. Any fast flying birds strikes and things like that. So. God forbid. <laughs> and then, second one. So what happens is when you're using both rows on here, 
it's two cables per mushroom. Okay. And again, I'm not over tightening them, it's just literally nipping that up. We don't want to crush the cables. And we just trim those off. And that is how we do a standard drop fiber install. Um, now there is other methods on how we, how these are installed. Obviously, there's obviously drop tube, which I'm just going to quickly show you now. So this this box takes five mil microduct, but it'll also we do a six mil seal as well. Um, I'm showing you a five mil here. But to install this, we don't need to remove these like we did with the cable because your cable's being blown out of here. What we do is we just push it straight into the hole. And these are designed, there we go, just so we get it out the other side. But it's designed, once they're in, that little wet, the, um, the membrane on the back just grips the cable and it doesn't pull out very easily. Ah, okay, so, that's securing it. So there, that would be a five mil pipe being pushed in. And there's another one, which we'll do in the top position. There we go, it's gone through. We may as well do the other two because I've got them there. that into position and then the last one on the top sometimes they can be stiff and sometimes you can lubricate them just before you push them in and there we go that's in place so that's how you would do a, a tube install into the same seal two options there exactly and obviously your cable will be blown through and then again terminate in the same way excellent and then, good job done. Any questions there? No, that's fine. Good Thank step. you, Stuart. No problem at all. Again, close the lid up. And screw it down, and that's your install done. And that's how to install the AFN enclosure. We hope you've enjoyed this installation video. For more videos like this, hit subscribe below or visit our website at htdata.co.uk. Thank you, and see you again soon.